from Rock and G Farm. Tonight, I am so excited to be planting the 2013 Hosta of the Year underneath my solar panels here on the farm. It's the Rainforest Sunshine Plantation Lily, and I have got three of those right now because they get up to 18 inches tall and they will spread out from one to two feet wide. So that is going to take up a good space underneath my solar panels here. They are hardy in zones three through nine. They do like um, clay soil or loamy soil. So that's great because we have hard, hard clay soil here. And in the early summer, they will bloom out um, light lavender, whitish um, flowers, probably getting, making them probably about 24 inches tall with the flower stalk. So I'm really excited about that to have just a little bit of greenery and some color underneath these solar panels. I did bring out a ruler so that I could measure them a good spacing apart because I don't want them overlapping too much. I do want them to cover the area to keep the weed suppression good, but I don't want them overlapping so much that they're going to be crowding each other and not grow to their full potential. So I'm ready to start digging. Oh, I have to watch. I know where the wires are underneath the solar panels, so I'm going to go around those too. So I'm just trying to figure out exactly how I want them. So I think this one's, this one's going to kind of go out towards the front and then come back. So we'll probably come back this way a little bit. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so there's one two feet so that's two feet so that'll give them plenty of room to grow well, hi hi Velma this is Velma but we call her meow meow <laughs> hey baby how are you oh you've got a mat in your hair I thought I just cut that out yesterday how are you one thing that I did remember just now, um, everything that I said said that these are slug resistant. So that is a bonus also because when I planted my other one about a week ago, I did notice some slugs around the bottom, but there's no slug damage on the leaves. So that is awesome. So maybe really try and get this um, plant for your garden. This will be great. Are you gonna help me? Are you helping me, Vilma? What are you doing? Well, we've got to get this in the ground because the sun's going down, baby girl. Yeah, sun's going down. So we're gonna plant this one here and then that way it'll start going back and it'll cover up this area. And I think I'll just kind of do the last one two feet that way. And then it'll just kind of give me a little flowing edge to that. good thing to see when you first start digging is an earthworm. That means that they're aerating your soil for you and helping to get that clay soil not compact anymore. Yay! That's a good thing. Because last summer when we started all of this journey on our new farm, when we were digging never found any worms and I was like oh this is not good not good at all but yay now we are come on oh there's the worm come back over here I want you over here oh I think I cut him in half sorry worm okay do you believe that will be deep enough oh yeah because you just want the top of your plant, where the soil on the top of your plant is, you want that level with the soil of the ground. 
You don't want it any deeper because when you water, it will go down and it will drown your plant. So you want to make sure that it's, it's level with the ground or just a little bit higher. There are some plants out there that do say plant deep. It'll say that on the tag, but don't plant your plants deep unless it definitely says that on the tag. Oh, more worms. This is awesome. I'm so excited. And we're root bound. <laughs> so I'm going to have to try to uh, easily break up the roots. Um, they'll bounce back. This one is a bounce back. This one's not as big as these anymore um, because I did plant this out earlier and we had um, probably three or four days where in the last couple of weeks where I've had, I'd already planted that, that the temperatures dropped down. I think one night it was like 27 and there was 30 a couple nights. So it, it didn't like it. I covered it up with um, a laundry basket and over the laundry basket, I put um, a sheet and kept that on it and it, it saved it no damage on the leaves and it's actually getting some more leaf growth right here but it's just not growing as big as the ones that were left in the greenhouse so the next about two weeks so far the temperatures at night are going to be in the um, upper 40s to 50s and so i'm like okay i'm gonna start getting everything in the ground and like i said this is root bound so i'm having a little bit of trouble getting it out of the pot Hang on with me. Oh, there we go. Great root system, but it is root bound. And you can see how it just kind of starts going around and the roots are just up. So I'm just gonna kind of break those up just a little bit so it can know that, hey, I don't have to continue to grow in the, in the shape of a square. There, just like that. And that gives it some encouragement to grow out instead of in a square. And I'm just going to put that down in my hole that I've dug. Let me, let me show you. Okay, so we've got the hole dug. I have brought my garden gypsum over. It is a calcium supplement that helps break down um, clay soil. So every time I plant anything in the ground, I always put a real thin layer on the bottom of the hole with my garden gypsum. So hopefully in the next couple, and my cut broke, the next couple of years with me doing that with everything, we will start getting better aeration of the soil here. So I'm just gonna shake that in the bottom. My roosters are fighting. So I put that in the bottom, it's no big deal. It is really, compacted soil so hopefully that'll work i'm also going to put some just basic 10 10 10 fertilizer because that's what i have and this soil needs uh, mending so this is what i'm going with um i do the water soluble weekly but every time i put something in the ground i put the gypsum in and i put some slow release fertilizer in and everybody's like oh are you sure you need this yes we have done soil testing of our property and we are lacking in calcium um we are fine in um, phosphorus but i'm still using the 10 10 10 because that's what i've got right now so i'm just going to do a very little bit not much because i don't want to burn my roots so probably two or three tablespoons in there and then I'm going to mix it up with some dirt or some soil just so that my roots won't go right on top of it and burn them. And then I'll, so we've got the garden gypsum and we've got some slow release fertilizer in. We have unbound the roots and so we're going to go ahead and plant. 
So we're in, I'm pulling the, the roots apart. Don't just stick them in, even though you've already um, loosened them up, you still have to kind of pull them apart a little bit so that they will start growing. And then I'm just going to start putting my soil back around it. Yeah, the soil temperature is still kind of cool. And there's that earthworm, let's put him back in there. When I am done, I will come back and just shake around the area my preen, which is a weed suppressant and a germination suppressant so that when the seeds from weeds blow through the air, they land here, they won't germinate in this area again. That lasts for about three months per uh, um, application. Been using that for probably 10 years now. That's a little crooked, don't want it crooked. Okay. Also, with it being summertime and everybody's walk, leaving their bags in their greenhouses, make sure that you check inside your bag before you stick your hand in um, so that you don't get bit by a snake. <laughs> Believe it or not, snakes like to go inside your bags of soil, so don't leave your soil. Or um, If you do leave your soil bag open, just check and make sure that there's no snakes in it. Of course, we do live in an area where there's snakes everywhere, so that's just something that we have to worry about here. we do have clay soil I want to make sure that I do press down on the soil after I put my plant in to make sure that there's no air pockets but I don't want to do it so hard that I add to the compact nature of the soil on plants like this also you want to make sure when you are putting soil in that you don't drop the soil down in to where the leaf is going to bloom back out because that will harm your plant and it will make um, that soil when it rains which we shouldn't have a problem but that soil if it's inside where the the there's a mosquito um where it's inside where the leaf is going to bloom out again that soil will get wet and just stick there and that can rot your plant now if you have any questions about any flowers or gardening tips that you would like you can leave those in the comments and um, I will come up and look at the comments and answer your questions and if I don't know the answer I will look those up and if I don't think that's a good enough answer I'll find somebody who now knows the answer better than I do I am just a home gardener enjoying my forever home trying to make what I have beautiful and I encourage you to make what you have beautiful also. That one's in, one more to go. And I brought my handy dandy water. Isn't it pretty? I got it at Lowe's last week. I think, I think it was only like $17, which is not bad. So just water around the bottom and just do it kind of slowly so that the water can soak in and go all the way down to the roots. You always want to give a good soaking first. I like to stop in between mine, let the water soak in, then add some more. Because my thing is, if you're watering and the water starts to run away, you're not watering your plant, you're watering the other areas. So what you'll want to do is water some, stop. Let that water soak in and then water some more. Takes a little bit more time, but that's just my method.
This is Sun Scald. I had them in my greenhouse, even though I had them on the on the floor and kind of tucked up underneath some of the um, tables. I didn't have them all the way out of the sun and the sun hits my greenhouse from the time it comes up in the morning till the time it sets and they got sun scald. So just make sure that if you do have plants in your greenhouse, be more vigilant than what I was to stick them out of direct sunlight and get them somewhere where when the sun comes over your greenhouse, it won't scald your plants. <laughs> We'll do the same thing here. And I did put the um, garden gypsum and the slow release fertilizer down. And I've loosened up the root ball. I'll put them in. That was too deep. And this is preen. This is what I was talking about that um, is weed suppression. It lasts for three months and you just shake it around your plants. It does not allow germination. So if you want to start your plants from seeds, you cannot use this. Um, I don't want anything germinating under here except for the plants that I put in myself. So I'm just gonna put this in and I know it's going to be a big process because I'm just planting over the weeds that are here and hopefully getting enough plants over here to, <laughs> to suppress the weeds. So thanks for joining me today, guys, and planting some of the hostas underneath my solar panel. Tomorrow I have some hookahs and some more hostas that I need to get under here. And thanks for joining me and make what you have beautiful. <laughs>